thing I want to start with is that um, usually when you start an enterprise, you start doing something, you really much focus on you know, a balance between something you're really good at and something you really would love to do. Uh, the thing, one thing that war in your country changes is that the thing you're very good at becomes the main priority and then uh, you know, hopefully you also enjoy doing it in the process because the priorities are different. You need to be the most efficient, you need to do it's the best thing for uh, you know, protecting the country. And so, before the full-scale invasion started in Ukraine, and you know, one important thing is the war didn't start two years ago, it started 10 years ago, right? But the full-scale invasion started two years ago, a bit more now. Um, everyone looked what you can do best. Somebody got, you know, became volunteers, started to work in humanitarian aid, somebody, and you know, a lot of people mobilized, and then a lot of engineers, entrepreneurs in Ukraine started looking how we can apply our expertise, our knowledge, our professionalism to build the solutions that will help our defense forces. And uh, what we started with our team, we looked into the issues that, you know, what, what we saw. We, we found that communications is something that seems very simple, some, seems some, everything needs to be resolved there. But we saw, you know, people running around trying to buy uh, commercial radios from around the world. Sometimes they bought out at the beginning. I think Ukraine bought out everything in Ukraine, in Europe, and in, in, in kind of um, even, even in Asia. I think I heard some uh, like a humanitarian fund buying uh, uh, radios, handsets in Argentina because everything was bought out in the closer kind of uh, countries. So what we focus on is building a solution that will you know, take our expertise and build a communication system for the front line with everything that we potentially can learn there. Um, the issue is that, right, it seems that um, you, know, you, f you put a better drone, you, you give a better gun, you, you know, put a, a better tank and everything is result. That is in some ways true, but the coordination of all of that is the very important thing that improves quality of every single operation. Um, and, you know, being a very unique place where our friends, our family members are at the front line, we can talk directly with them. I have, you know, numbers in my signal chat app of hundreds of hundreds of, of, of soldiers currently deployed who can use, who can say what actually hurts, uh, you know, as, as opposed to usually building for defense procurement agencies for ministries of defense. We build the product, we decided to build the product specifically for the end user at the front line, and we started with that, and only then we adapted to the actual kind of procurement cycles of the, um, of the, you know, of Ukraine right now, and then we're actually already going global. Uh, the thing is, at the beginning, you know, we focus on the Ukrainian problem, and it's also, you know, a lot of things they say are kind of very typical and a good thing to do just for any startup, but it, we had this journey just because of necessity, where first we focus on the Ukrainian issues, and we saw, we, we only thought that it's, you know, uniquely uh, Ukrainian problems that we use, you know, digital mobile radios, which are commercial for for the front line, then it appeared that almost every single country has the same issues that we talk with, because the existing systems are complex to use, overpriced, not produced in enough qu uh, quantities, and it appeared that the you know very uniquely unique Ukrainian problem that we're solving actually exists almost everywhere. It was in everyone we talk with, for even like the best uh, well-funded militaries like uh, you know U.S. Uh, armed forces. What we build is a Hamira tactical communication system um, that does com combine a lot of the industry standard technology uh, with a lot of nuances and kind of know-hows uh, that we only gathered because we talked with users directly. So the thing is, very unique thing we've done is that we only realized that in commercial off-the-shelf components that nobody still was still struggling to push that it's actually possible because the kind of state-of-the-art product in our industry costs tens of thousands of dollars. We we made it for Ukrainian armed forces for hundreds of dollars, and they use it instead of the you know handsets they they have, which are kind of state-of-the-art on the market. Over the last two years, we're a new defense company. You know, usually defense players in this industry are uh, de decades old. We uh, we've built, um, we uh, have around more than 3,000 users in every type of combat unit in the Ukrainian armed forces. We have a manufacturing capacity of 1,000 radius a month and growing. We're launching a kind of seventh version of our hardware. Um, which is Hamir G1 Pro, which uh, we expect to deliver in tens of thousands by the end of this year, uh, by the need that we, we see from um, our country and uh, um, countries we talk with uh, 
Estonia is one of them, actually. Um, and uh, yeah, we now diversifying into different products, and that all again, you know, we before that, now none of us on the team have military experience. We didn't want to do defense tech. We never planned for it, but out of necessity, we built a product that is now indispensable for thousands of uh, uh, troops in the Ukrainian armed forces. We work, as I said, with every type of combat unit from general applications brigade, territorial defense, special operations, intelligence units, etc., etc., and etc. Um, thank you so much. I'll probably finish on that. I want to tell a story that it is possible to not, you know, in a very classical industry uh, that is considered to be everything is done, uh, everything is taking, all the people are, uh, you know, all the companies, all the, all the niches are already taken, there is nothing to do, there is nothing to innovate with, there are no opportunities for smaller companies. It's not true. You can actually make the difference, you can actually take your expertise and, and, and do something that is, uh, as I said, indispensable. Thank you. <laughs>